so uh, this is another response video to the wonderful uh, BBC article by Rupert Wingfield. And, you know, um, I have lived in Japan for uh, ever since I was born. Um, you know, except for the two wonderful years I was in University of Cambridge, UK. And um, I think um, I kind of know uh, what uh, the challenges and problems that we face in this country. Uh, Rupert's article in, B in the BBC uh, has pointed out many interesting and salient um, issues, um, including the you know, ubiquitous manhole, manhole art and, you know, um, the lecture uh, when you renew your driving license and so on. Um, you know, my feeling is that uh, this is a really complex and, uh, you know, enigmatic country. E enigmatic even for someone who was born here and, you know, have ever since lived here. Um, you know, um, because things um, do not necessarily follow logic. I mean, um, you know, they are uh, long-standing heuristics and customs that f you follow and you respect and you don't necessarily um, search the stringent efficiency um, of uh, economy or um, cybernetics, if you like. Um, the, you know, for example, uh, the way the driving license is renewed is probably very far from being logical or being efficient. However, um, in this country, when something is done in, in a certain way, there's a tendency in the people that they respect the status quo and let it be that way without questioning too much about the rationale for doing these kind of things. And mind you, uh, this kind of attitude has helped Japan preserve many of its cultural heritage. So let it be. That, I think, is the mantra that uh, crosses uh, the minds of many Japanese people. And that has made Japan such a country with venerable traditions and so on. But of course, we are living in the global economy and nobody is you know, exempt from the fierce competition that we are ex exposed to nowadays. So, you know, the really uh, piercing and essential question is whether we can keep this way of living um, in a sustainable way. And I am someone who is probably um, very doubtful of the sustainability of the Japanese way of life as it is now. And I have been a vocal critic of these customs in the you know, last couple of decades. And, um, but in recent years, I have started two things, right? Uh, one is to write books about Japan in English. Uh, the first book, The Little Book of Ikigai, or Awakening Your Ikigai in the United States, um, you know, was well received, and I was ha happy for that. Uh, my second book, The Way of Nagomi, came out last April in the UK, and this January in the United States, and I hope it will be read by people who are interested in Japan and Japanese way of life. And, you know, I have started doing that because I believe that it's all about metacognition. Uh, you know, when we try to view ourselves from the point of view of an external observer uh, through the uh, linguistic expressions of English, uh, so to speak, um, then we can probably hope to uh, come to a more balanced and more revealing uh, understanding of uh, the Japanese culture. So that is one thing I studied. And the second is to, you know, try to do the best uh, for me and for the people around me without uh, necessarily vocally criticizing the status quo of the Japanese life. Because, you know, um, I feel that people are probably doing their best in their own ways. Um, I'm not saying that I am opti optimistic as Leibniz, you know, this is the best of all possible worlds. 
thing. Um, I am not saying that, but uh, I do feel that, you know, each person is probably doing his or her best. And I've got to do my own, you know, version of doing the best. And, um, you know, I, I think that is a, probably the only thing that I can do uh, in terms of trying to make this world a better place. And Rupert's uh, article, I think, uh, was the best that this wonderful uh, journalist from the UK could do. And I really appreciated that. But uh, in, we should probably do our best in, you know, our respective field of activities. And that is the only way, probably, to make this world better. Not only in Japan, but uh, the world in general. And vocal criticism sometimes can be hindering. Um, you know, and in Japan, uh, the structure is, um, you know, from the major restoration, uh, the intellectuals, um, <clears throat> university professors uh, have been criticizing the status quo of Japan and, you know, comparing its customs with those in the so-called advanced countries, like the UK, Europe, and the United States. And this pattern of criticism probably has, a, you know, kind of overkill um, resonation now in the psyche of the average Japanese mind. So that when there is a external criticism, they ex accept that with interest, but not, sorry, not necessarily implementing it or indeed listening to it really. So probably that's not a really uh, interesting pattern to follow from now on. Um, so I think we really need to do something that is constructive, that is proactive, uh, without necessarily uh, resorting to the well-tested and, you know, probably now mundane way of criticism from the external world. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not referring to the Rupert article here, obviously. I'm referring to the traditional rule, traditional, um, you know, role that was filled by the Japanese intellectuals and college professors uh, of importing ideas from the external world and trying to improve the Japanese ways of life. And that probably isn't really working at now. Um, uh, that kind of role, self-proclaimed uh, role of the intellectuals is probably moot nowadays. So, so I don't want to in fall into that trap um, myself. So that's why I'm writing books in English uh, on Japanese culture and at the same time trying to do my best as a scientist, as a um, professor and researcher and writer and broadcaster here in this country. And this is a video that I is a part of my effort to do it the best way that I could in my own unique way. So anyway, this is a long version of my response to Rupert's um, uh, you know, wonderful article in the BBC website. So let's keep up. Good job.